while lots of these are my footprints that I've just made, I've also noticed a familiar tread pattern. Same person, I reckon, as the last blooming bunker I was in, on the last hole. Whoever's doing this, just stop it. This isn't difficult, what I'm doing right now. It's a bit annoying, but just rake the bunkers. Hi guys, welcome back to part two from Yaz Island and straight away we're going to go in with a reference back to the yardage of the course and quite a clever thing they do here at Yaz is that they have little numbers on all the tee blocks so you know which one's which from a distance because sometimes when you're looking for your blue tees on a course that you've not played for you can get a little bit lost and it's very frustrating but this 66 refers to 6,600 yards where I've chosen to play the course from. There are 70s which obviously depict the second from the back tees, 7,000 yards and somewhere back there which I've not even ventured to have a look there must be a 74, 7,400 yards, 62s here and then 55s down there. Quite like the idea because Sometimes, and actually this morning at Sadia, I went on a bit of a hunt a couple of times looking for the tees that I was supposed to be playing off. Not always obvious when it's just the colour from a distance. Right guys, as I said, welcome back to Yaz Lynx, third and final course of the Abu Dhabi Tour. Um, as I said, in part one, this is one of three courses that we package up for you guys for a yourgolftravel.com holiday. The others being Sadia Beach, which I played this morning, absolutely spectacular, and Abu Dhabi Golf Club, which of course hosted the European Tour event earlier this week. Not been a good start, not been a good start at all. I'm on nine points through six holes, should be on 12, I'm gonna be playing towards my handicap. Nine's not too bad, you know, considering some of the shots I've hit. But driving's still going well. Irons have not been as good as they were at Sadiat this morning, but I think the biggest difference is the severity of the areas around the greens here at Yaz. My short game's pants and I just can't deal with it. Um, so I need to start hitting more greens, basically. But I got 400 and... 90 yard par 5, wind helping, so I should be able to get home in 2 if I get a good drive on it. Hopefully make up some points. Yeah, um, yeah that, that went over there. Guessing it's going to reload. Truth be told, ever since patting myself on the back about how good my driving's become, in comparison to what it was, I'm not pretending like I'm some sort of driving god, I've hit three pretty poor ones. Might not be getting any points in this hole, guys. Hmm. I can see a ball, which I presume is my second one, and it's in GUR. So, I should be able to get a drop if that's me. Right. In a throwback to some of the old classic, got the wrong club. In a throwback to some of the old classic Lynx courses, which this feature is not that popular among golfers. Completely blind second shot. This is where the benefit of having a GPS on your buggy helps out because if I was going to guess, I'd be pumping this over the middle of this massive mound on the right. But according to GPS, the line is just over the right edge of this bunker, which I never would have guessed. So we've got 250 ish, 255. Three wood is not behaving itself, and it is downwind, so try and rip two iron, get within 50 to 20 yards of the green, depending on how well I hit this.
Right, anyone who tuned into part one, just towards the end of that video, I said I might have found something with my chipping. Because while it had gotten better towards my last trip with the Muppets, which must have been Grand Canaria about six months ago now, it has <laughs> reverted to type and it's Duff City most of the time. But I just nipped on off a fairway. The chip I hit, which I thought I'd found something on on the part one of this video, was off a nice fluffy lie, so it wasn't the best acid test, but just nipped on off the fairway quite nicely. Still not like mega close, but I'm happy with the strike. Definitely something to work on in the coming holes. Ah, oh, another double bogey. No shot on that hole, so blob. Goes from worse, or goes from bad to worse. Right, still stuck on nine points. Not the end of the world when you're playing on a golf course like this. Yaz is spectacular. It is difficult, to be honest with you. I need to be playing better. I can hear the F1 track in the background. I think you can actually do driving experiences there. It's not just for the Formula One. And obviously, you can see Ferrari well behind me as well. Where they got the world's fastest roller coaster, if you're into that sort of thing. I know I love roller coasters, so. Shame I don't have time to go and explore that. Getting picked up from here later, shooting back to the hotel and back to the UK in the morning. But a few more holes left in me yet. Right guys, about 165 spectacular par three with death on the right. Big slopes on the left as well, so you can actually be quite quite conservative here and hit it up the left. Hopefully it'll come down those slopes towards the pin. Um, it's kind of an eight iron yardage, but I definitely don't want to become short, so I've got seven. And I'm gonna hit it up the left in theory with a tiny bit of cut. It should be good kicking up that slope. Get down there. Here we go, get down a little bit more. So as planned, I've hit a kind of nice high cut up the left, trying to use this slope and feed the ball down towards the pin. Now there's another slope here, which you might not be picking up on camera. It's kind of like a hog's back. It starts rolling towards the pin here. And if you're a little bit long, it starts rolling towards the back of the green. And I've hit it a little bit too far, caught the wrong side of it. So while I've come down here as planned, I've then hit this slope, feeding the ball left rather than right. If I'd been brave enough to hit the eight iron, which as I said on the tee was probably the club of choice, I might well have pitched more around there. And then potentially, if gravity does me a favor here, it doesn't make me look like an idiot. That ball should turn right a little bit. Start feeding down towards the slope a little bit more. And yeah, instead of putting from 35, 40 feet, I might be putting from 20. Right, that's more like it. That should be a par. Absolutely spectacular par three, by the way. Any hole that kind of flanks this. I don't know what body of water this is, but it's obviously the waters around Yaz Island. Yeah. They're absolutely gorgeous. Hopefully, I can knock this in for what, if memory serves, might only be my second par of the day. Not the day, my day here at Yaz. And I've pushed it, and I've pushed it. Good, excellent. Good, good, good. Right guys, ninth tee, I hope the quality of the golf course uh, is keeping you guys inspired to stay tuned because let's face it, quality of my golf certainly wouldn't be or shouldn't be. Anyone who's watching for me playing golf, turn this video off right now. Anyway, ninth hole, some would say that this is the signature hole here at Yaz Links. I think the 18th, if memory serves, is absolutely brilliant as well. As I said, I don't think I'm gonna get that far. Might be able to skip ahead depending on how many golfers are on the course, but as we spin the camera around, number nine, Water all the way up the right. Dramatic bunkers and slopes and mounds all the way up the left. Yes, please. Another good drive required. Right, currently only sitting on 10 points through eight holes, so. Oh, 
par here gets me to 13 through 9, so five worse than handicap would suggest. But only if I make par, and let's be honest, it's unlikely. Um, even the driver on the last hole I hit it on didn't go too well, so come on, remember the swing thought, get another good one in play. Get down there, ball. Right, you guys can probably see again why this might be considered the signal hole on the course. No idea what that building in the distance is, the big disc. Anyone know what that is? Comments down below if you do. Um, but yeah, absolutely spectacular green sight. The tee shot was pretty impressive. This second shot was beautiful. Got 160. Picked eight iron this time because, as you can see, going long isn't too useful. That could be very good. Click the slope. Go left. Roll out a little bit. Yes, thank you. Right guys, 13 points through the first nine holes here at Yaz Links. Not the best, but also let's not forget a point that I keep trying to drive home on social media, and let's not forget what handicap actually represents. I'm a little bit disappointed with 13 points, but really when I think about it, I kind of shouldn't be. I'm not playing great. I'm playing on a very difficult golf course in comparison to the one where I get my handicap from. And a handicap is supposed to reflect your potential. So I think this morning when I was playing really well for 18 holes, for the majority of 18 holes, I shot a good score and I was happy with it. Today, or this afternoon even, same day, not playing great, it has to be said. But I think this golf course probably is more challenging. The wind's a little stronger. And 13, it's five off where I should be, handicap wise. It's not that bad, is it really? I mean, it could be a lot worse. Anyway, I've never pretended to be anything other than I am, and that's a pretty bang average to terrible goal for 90% of the time with the odd good round of me, as I showed this morning. But hopefully, heading into the back nine here at Yaz, I can pick it up a little bit. Nice par there on the signature hole ninth. One of the most difficult holes in the golf course as well, by the way. So shot hole for three points, making it 13 through nine. Yeah, heading into the back nine now. Again, I'm still not sure how many holes I'm actually gonna get in because I'm being picked up at a certain, about an hour and a half, sun's going down in about the same amount of time. I need to do a bit of footage in the clubhouse, all that kind of stuff, so. Can I squeeze in nine more holes? I doubt it. Six more? Maybe, we'll see. We'll play some speed golf and we'll see. All right, 10th hole, only 350 yards from the blue tee today. Um, driver definitely not required, but I just feel like hitting it, you know? So. Straight out that bunker in the middle of the fairway, maybe slightly right of it, it's perfect. Let's see if I can get back to hitting decent drives after those couple of wobbly ones. Yeah. Not seeing that down, it was a good flight, very close to the line I picked. If I'm guessing anything, I hit it too well and I might have actually run into that bunker but we shall see. If I have done, I could be in a spot of bother because it's pretty menacing looking from back here. Mm, yes, that was just another incorrect select from the tee. Probably should have been hitting two iron on this same line but firstly thank you to the person who's walked straight through the middle of the bunker and not bothered raking it. You are a legend. Um, I have probably got about 110, so I'm not too worried about the lip, it just requires a good strike from here. Well, I actually got 103, so 56. Um, yeah, as I said, it's all on the strike from here, really. If I strike it well, this in front of me shouldn't be an issue. Should be very good. Oh, I've flown it about five yards too far and there's a massive backstop at the back of the green. It did spin, just not quite enough. Um, just by the way, the person who was here before me 
the with the footprints. The good thing about filming yourself is I've got a precise count of how long that took breaking that bunker. It wasn't long, was it? Let's try and have a bit more respect for other paying customers and even more so the greenkeepers who keep courses like this in such great shape. Come on, try harder. Right, just coming up onto the green, another slopey, magnificent looking thing. I've flown it, as I said, maybe 10 yards too long to be honest with you. Not quite sure where I pitched, but I saw it spin back, so let's just see how much force it actually needs to have been a pretty decent shot. Yeah, I mean, that would have needed quite a lot more spin, but had that pitched here with the spin it had, because it definitely came back a few feet, that's going back to about not quite that close, but it was a good shot so that kind of illustrates the margins you're working with here well in golf in general but especially here at Yaz where the slopes are so pronounced and everything's just so dramatic and it was a decent tee shot and it was a decent second shot and now I've got a tricky tricky putt for a birdie I don't know if you guys can hear that over there on the camera that sounds an awful lot like someone's being taken around a drag track which I think Mark, Matt and Dan did recently. I wish I had more time off the course here in Abu Dhabi, it must be said. Go in. <laughs> well, that was a birdie. I actually feel like a bit of a cheat now. Because, and I can I can feel the comments coming, oh you took a practice putt, you took a practice. I one handed it down the slope to kind of prove a point and I could hit another 50 putts from there and it's not being holed so. <sighs> Screw it, it's <is> birdie. <laughs> Right guys, keeping an eye on the time, and the sun is going down fairly quickly. It's now 10 past five, we've got another 50 minutes. And basically while I'm here, I decided that this is gonna be a two-parter, 12 holes. So 24 points is the target, <laughs> obviously that's not happening. Um, just birdied my 10th hole of the day, so onto my 11th, but I've actually picked the 17th, which I think, as you can see, well, we're talking about the ninth being the signature hole, this is absolutely spectacular and I know the 18th is pretty special as well so I thought I'd finish on two of the course's best holes for you guys see if I can just make the score semi-respectable I'll show you this amazing par 3 and then the 18th which also sweeps around the cove to finish right guys second to last hole of the day 175 yard par 3 no prizes for coming short so I'm hitting 6 which is usually about a 180 club don't mind going a few yards past this pin. I certainly don't want to be flirting with the water if I miss strike a seven. So coming off the back of a birdie, can I finish in style on this absolutely incredible par three? One of the best I've seen in Abu Dhabi so far, and that's saying a lot because they've all been pretty spectacular. Oh, I flailed it high and right. Right, bit of a shame, flailed one high and right. And I've got a funny little example of why making this content can be quite amusing at times. Um, as you will have noticed, sometimes we chuck in a bit of B-roll, um, which basically is just footage where you don't have time to set up the shot because there's golfers on the course, blah, blah, blah. I had lots of time on that tee, so I thought I'd get a nice slow-mo shot in preparation for me hitting the tee shot. And I'll explain why that's both amusing and annoying all at the same time in about five seconds. Right, so as we walk down to yet another spectacular green complex, we will see my tee shot, which I'm using for the purpose of the vlog, which is my real ball in the little drop-off to the right big bowl type thing going on very 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 Yaz links and as we walk onto the green we will see 
the slow-mo shot I recorded before I started the vlog again for a bit of slow-mo loveliness and social media and all the rest of it but I'm going to be honest with you guys that was not intended to be my real ball for the video so stuck the first ball I hit off this tee to about six feet and my game ball in the bowl over there oh YouTube oh. Right, chipping is by no means perfect, but I've definitely found something which has helped the strike a little bit. So, when I get back to the UK, I can be bothered to drag myself to the practice green. Hopefully, the short game can get back to kind of where it was in Grand Canary, where it was okay. And just to break my heart a little bit more, let's just see what happens here. No, thank God for that. Right guys, final hole of the Abu Dhabi tour and look what we're facing behind me. Another forced carry over the water. Spectacular, dramatic, difficult. Can almost guarantee that I'll be bailing out a little bit over in that direction. But as with Sadia, it's quite tough to pick a signature hole. I mean, the ninth was spectacular, 17 was amazing, 16 I haven't shown you guys, but looking back down the hole, also just absolutely incredible along this, I'm not gonna call it coastline, because I still don't know what body of water this is, but it is dramatic. It is unlike anything else you're gonna find in the UAE and it just speaks to the quality of the variation of the three top end courses you're going to find out here in Abu Dhabi. As they say, variety is the spice of life and you can combine all three courses that I've played this week with all the other benefits you get out here in Abu Dhabi, you're winning. Right, I've come back to the back tee on this hole just to make a point of how spectacular it is. The other tees are just over there, still going over the water, just don't look quite as good on camera, you know. Um, 6.46, par 5. Um, Gonna need two pretty, pretty ferocious shots to get anyone near. Even just having like a wedge into this green for my third. And that is not terrible, but it's up the right and cutty. Could be scrubby, but I saw it bounce a couple of times. It should be all right. Yeah, scrub land found. My personal advice would not be to play this hole off the back feet. Um, I've still got an absolute mile in from here. And luckily I drew an okay lie. Still needs a good shot from here. Uh, I think that's going to be bunker or more scrubland for third. Right guys, so far I've hit driver, high and right, four iron high and right, six iron out of the scrub, and I've still got an eight iron in. Uh, don't play off the back tees. Don't do it, only doing it for the camera. It is a shot hole though, so not like my score is in any way relevant anymore, but. On the green, we're putting. Right guys, there we go. Abu Dhabi tour, done and dusted, box ticked. What a golf course Yaz Links is. It's a shame I didn't get to see all 18 holes or be able to show you guys all 18 holes because I'm sure there are far more spectacular ones out there on the back nine which we didn't get to see. I'm sure you'll agree though from the ones that you did see, this place is up there with the courses, the other two courses I've played while I've been over here in Abu Dhabi. As I'm sure you're getting from this series of videos, those three courses are at such a high level in conjunction with some pretty spectacular accommodation. The two hotels I've stayed in have been absolutely fantastic. Crown Plaza on Yaz Island right here and the Western at Abu Dhabi, which backs out straight out onto the golf course. Um, so yeah, I mean, look, packaging being able to go to see the HSBC Abu Dhabi Championships on the European Tour with being able to play golf courses of this standard 
and enjoy five-star luxury and enjoy incredible weather and not have to travel too far for it. I mean, seven hour flight is doable, right? It's the opportunity to be able to do that is fantastic. So I've absolutely loved my time in Abu Dhabi. If you guys have got any questions about this destination, you know what to do. Drop some comments down below. Email me at Raimondo at yourgolftravel.com. Make sure you subscribe to the Your Golf Travel channel for more amazing travel content from destinations around the world. I'm not sure where I'm going next, but as usual, my calendar at the start of a year fills up pretty quick, so I'm pretty sure it's gonna be quite cool. Anyway, thank you for everyone who's followed along in Abu Dhabi, and I'll see you from somewhere else pretty damn cool, pretty damn soon, I'm sure. See you later.